What's up y'all? Welcome to Tabletop Bros. Today we're going to be working on one of my favorite commissions. But instead of waiting to the end to show you the completed models, we're going to take a quick look at them first and then we're going to work through the process of painting, assembling, and basing two Armager Warglaive conversions. So these particular Armager Warglaive conversions are designed to go along with an Adeptus Custodes army. I came up with the idea a few years ago and they're some of my favorite conversions. You'll notice that they have quite a few bits from other kits that are necessary to create them, as well as quite a bit of articulation achieved through the actual armature kit, as well as quite a bit of magnetization. They're designed so that they can hold their spears upright, or they can hold them in two hands as well. And the actual spears themselves are basically Malta chain glaives, so they incorporate the two main weapons of the armature war glaives, but more so in the aesthetic of the Adeptus Custodes double-handed spears. So one really cool thing about this video is we're going to be demonstrating a bunch of basic techniques that can be used for a million different projects. So we initially start off by priming our two main colors, which are silver and gold. And then we're going to go through the actual process of how I paint silver and gold, which is very useful for everything from regular old vehicles to things like Adeptus Custodes or Stormcast Eternals basic armor. And the best part is it's achieved using Rust-Oleum Rattle Can Spray, Citadel Washes slash Shades, and some traditional citadel paints as well but by avoiding using the actual rattle cans of citadel spray we get a substantially better effect with minimal extra effort for a fraction of the cost and then towards the end we're going to be doing our custom basing which in this case is imperial ruins and then we're going to add some snow we're going to be doing a basic muzzle burn technique which is a sort of like heat weathering on metallics and then finally we're going to pop in and do some osl with the airbrush at the end to simulate that awesome glow effect so I'll have a list of all the paints used down in the description, but we're starting off here with our silver spray, and then we're just gonna be going through and using Nullin Oil to coat the entire thing. Now the Nullin Oil is gonna take a little bit of the sheen off of the silver, but the way it collects down in the cracks, it's gonna give it much more depth. And you can see as we're going through here in this sped up video process, that as we apply the Nullin Oil, it tones down the gloss and gleam a little bit, but it adds quite a bit of actual depth to the model and brings out a lot of those less evident details. This is a simple process and the bigger brush you use, the faster this is gonna go. There's also some alternative methods where you like basically dip your models completely into a wash or you could potentially even use oil washes. But to tell you the truth, the Citadel washes work phenomenally well. And by using the silver spray primer combined with Nullin Oil, you get almost a perfect one-to-one -one match with Lead Belcher, which is one of my favorite paints from Games Workshop. Next, we're gonna be doing our gold effects. And once again, we're using a Rust-Oleum gold spray and then we're gonna be using Reichland Flesh Shade from Games Workshop. And as we sort of go over everything, we're paying specific attention not to get excess amounts of the wash down in the joints, because when it dries, it can stop them from working and articulating the way that we want them to. But you'll see very quickly that again, this adds tons and tons of detail to the model. I'll remove wherever it pulls up a little bit too heavy, but in general, you can see almost right off the bat, this is gonna give us a very close match to Retributor Armor, which is one of my favorite gold colors and the one that we'll be using later on. And again, part of the beauty of these two techniques for the silver and gold is that it allows us to use that spray primer without having to buy Games Workshop's $35 a can primer. It gives a much smoother finish. And in all the years I've been doing this, I've never had to worry about the sort of grainy effect that occasionally happens from Games Workshop's spray primers. So not only are they super expensive, but I feel like Games Workshop's spray primers, particularly the metallics, are an inferior product. So we're not going to be demonstrating the actual process that I created these conversions, but you can see with the individual components, essentially what I've gone for. The main changes that have been made is quite a bit of additional Adeptus Custodes bits to make them fit in with the rest of an army. We use two shields as the shoulder pads for the carapace. Obviously we have our Melta Chain Spear conversion to look more similar to the Custodes weapons. And then we use various other bits like some swords with the hands removed to represent their Misericordias and then some Terminator tabards and shoulder pads for the sort of shin guards. So once we get everything laid down and it's completely dry, as far as our metallics are concerned, we're gonna go through and do a dry brush layer over top of the gold. And for this, we're gonna be using our Retributor armor, and that's gonna bring everything up to that beautiful sheen once again, a little bit of which was lost by our shade, but it's gonna stop us from having any of that like traditional sort of like coffee staining effect and make sure that everything looks clean and good. Now we're gonna go through and pick out some additional details so you'll notice that we've essentially picked all of the like stuff that's predominantly silver and sprayed that in silver and washed it. And then all of the stuff that's predominantly gold, sprayed that in gold and then washed it. And then we dry brushed all of the gold by using batch painting techniques and essentially painting the majority of the models with our rattle cans. We eliminate a lot of the tedious process and make sure that we get a nice and smooth coat of our metallics. 
And then by picking out the smaller details, it makes it substantially less obvious to the end user. So once we get all of those basics done, that's our metallic silver and metallic gold essentially finished. We're going to need to go through and do our actual basing. So you'll notice that I've used a couple of pieces of like ruined statue from some of the older Games Workshop Sector Imperialis kits. I've marked out clearly on the bases where the actual feet outlines will go. And then I've attached a couple of like the larger pieces of rubble. I've added a couple of magnets so that the spears can stand upright. There's magnets in the bottom of the shafts and then also in the corner of the statues. And then I'm just going through and essentially adding in some of our typical mix. The mix is composed of little bits of cork rubble, some sand from the beach, and then we're just essentially layering it up with super glue. We're regularly testing to make sure that the feet still fit exactly where they need to be and don't interfere with our mounting points. Once we have the construction of our bases complete, we're just going to prime them. In this case, I started off with a black and then I did a gray and a lighter white, sort of a xenothal prime. And then I went through afterwards and dry brushed on a couple of different shades of gray. And then I went through and shaded the majority of everything with some Agrax Earth Shade. I then picked out a couple of our key details with gold and silver and then did some additional washing on them. And then of course painted our base rims Abaddon Black. Once this is all done, we're ready to move on from the bases and we're going to work on our muzzle burn. So the idea with the muzzle burn is essentially to show that there has like been extreme heat and sort of like charring or blackening towards the end of the barrel. And oftentimes you'll see the metallics have a sort of oil slick like look to them. So the way we achieve this is we start with our gold, which is already applied to all the pieces that we need. And then we're gonna go through with a sort of brown color. You can use light or dark, it doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna follow that off with the metallic purple. Each color that we add along the way, we're just making sure to cover a little bit less of the previous surface area. So we want the most of it to be covered by the gold and then the brown, the metallic purple, and then we're going through at the end and adding a little bit of char to the barrels with our black. And that's a simple way to achieve this sort of like heat weathering technique, which obviously, as you can see, adds quite a bit to the model and looks super cool. After that, we're going to go through and just add on some of our like basic extra little bits that we painted separately. In this case, we have our sort of like hair plumes in red, the shield captain capes on the back. And then after we've went ahead and glued all of these various bits on, we're just going to go through once again, once that's completely dry with some of our Citadel shades and just shade around that area. We want to be rather robust with our application of shades as once they dry, they're going to act as an additional adhesive and strengthen those attachment points. So once that's all done, we have all of our additional bits added on. We make sure that all of our articulation is still working correctly. We're going to step over real quick to the airbrush. And I've showed off the OSL like painting techniques quite a bit. So we're not going to demonstrate that in this video, but we'll just talk a little bit about it as we show off these nearly completed models. So in this case, I started off with some Talisar blue with no additional additives, just straight out of the airbrush. That's going to give us a sort of like dark surrounding area. Again, we're going to hit the most part of the model that we want to remain blue with this color. And then we're just going to add in like one or two drops of white ink. I love the Liquitex white ink, but whatever brand you prefer is fine. And we're just going to do a sort of medium blue color over a smaller bit of that surface area next, and then a lighter blue color finally. And then once we're completely done with that, we're going to wait till that is completely dry. And we're going to go through with a nice watery white mix and just hit the absolute most glowing areas. In this case, down in the sort of like power plants. You'll notice also that we've used our basic lens technique on the lens on top, as well as our gem technique on the gems. And now we basically have our completed models. So we can see that there's quite a bit of articulation on these models, and if done correctly with the application of magnets, we're able to simulate that the armagers are holding their weapons in either one hand, vertically, or in both hands with the sort of horizontal feel. And in this case, we have the models demonstrated with the Malta weapon on top, and then also the stubber on the arm, but either weapon can be switched to either spot. And realistically, for game terms, you're only going to get to use one or the other, so you can just leave it where you like it and take the other one off. So the final step here is the application of snow. And again, we've done a bunch of videos on basic snow techniques. In this case, we're using Valhalla and Blizzard straight out of the pot from Citadel. And as we've demonstrated in this video with the final product, a couple of basic techniques on a nice conversion can yield some amazing results. Again, these things came out absolutely awesome. It's one of my favorite conversions and I really love the paint jobs and just how everything looks. The articulation is super cool and anybody that's played an Adeptus Custodes army in the past knows that outside of Forge World they're lacking a lot of like the cool armor. So the addition of a couple of armagers for the extra armor, speed, and damage dealing not only in shooting but in combat suits the army really nicely. 
So if you enjoyed today's video, hopefully by now, Tabletop Bros has earned your subscription. If you have any questions about the conversion process, where some of the bits came from, or how exactly we did a particular painting technique, feel free to reach out to me in the comments below. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and hopefully enjoy today's video. And if you did, make sure to stay tuned because we got plenty more coming down the pipe. Man, do I love these things. And they came out awesome. But that's it from the Tabletop Bros. Later.